Now, <laughs> catalog of lootings in Nigeria, how corruption under PDP became child's play under APC. That is Nigeria for you. Okay, so we, PDP period, right from when Obasanjo entered in 1999 to when Goodluck left office in 2015, we were shouting that PDP 16 years of rule was more of 16 years of corruption and looting especially the ones that happened under good lord jonathan for six years became the apex of looting as at 2014-2015 and that was why nigerians uh, uh, uh why is this name Buhari came on the mantra of corruption uh, uh, mitigation and uh, people followed him voting him thinking as an old man he should use his brain to end corruption in nigeria Unfortunately, the corruption that took place under Buhari became the worst ever in the history of Nigeria, even worse than those that took place under PDP 16 years of rule. And it's quite unfortunate that the trend, if you try to plot the direction of Nigerian system, the trend of Nigerian government and economy is always nosing downwards and is still doing, going downwards. It has, it, when, you, when you think you have seen it all, a new era will spring up and you know that you've not really you really haven't seen it all okay this is actually very very bad so let's see what uh, is happening here one one of the corruption uh, uh, issue that took place uh, was the diversion of 40 billion naira from federation account a company uh, continental transfer technique had been hired by the ministry of interior to collect the combined expatriate residence permit and alien card sepac uh sepac fee of two thousand dollars per annum from every expatriate in nigeria the revenue from 2019 comes to an average of 40 billion naira per annum this collection, which violates Section 162 of the Constitution and provisions of the Immigration Act 2015, is then shared on percentages of federal government 30 uh, on federal government, 30 interior ministries, seven immigration services, and continental transfer technique 58 percent. Hmm. We challenge this illegality at the federal high court and won the cases. Okay, the court directed the, the Nigerian Immigration Service to collect the funds henceforth and remit same to the Federation account. But the contractor and the federal government appealed against judgment and have continued to share the 40 billion naira per annum. Oh boy. Number two, additional revenue of $1.5 billion payable to Federation account. In July 2015, uh, I drew the attention of the federal government to the fact that 15-year fiscal incentives given to the oil and gas companies operating under the deep offshore and inland basin production sharing contract, contract act had expired in June 2014. When the federal government ignored our request, we drafted a bill for the amendment of the law. The bill, which was adopted and sponsored by Senator uh, Theophilus Oji scaled the first reading in the Senate but was not passed before the dissolution of the 8th National Assembly. However, the same bill was modified and passed by both houses of the 9th National Assembly and assented to by President Buhari on November 4, 2019. In justifying the passage of this bill, Senate President Ahmed Lawan announced that the new law would increase the revenue of the nation by not less than 1.5 billion naira per annum. But where is it now? Oh boy. So for 2019, that that bill was signed into law by everybody to today, four years after, there's no information. Falano, they try hard to keep all these records. 
Now number three, outstanding royalties of $62 billion in campaigning for the amendment of the Deep Offshore and Inland Basin Production Sharing Contract. I, I follow on speaking here, I requested the federal government to collect outstanding royalties payable by the international oil companies under the Act. The federal government admitted that the country had lost a whopping sum of $60 billion, but my demand for the collection of the huge fund was ignored. The government of River State, Aquaibom State, and Baisa State then approached the Supreme Court, which on October 20, 2018, ordered the federal government to collect the royalties for the past 18 years. The federal government confirmed that the outstanding royalties withheld by the IOCs is $62 billion, but has refused to collect it. Why? Why? Because they know how they are trading and reselling and reselling among themselves. Hmm. Number four, federal government denied revenue of $500 million by a group of corrupt public officers. The International Cargo Tracking Note, uh, tracking, the International Cargo Tracking Note Scheme to protect international shipping and prevent the movement of dangerous cargo and arms shipments was introduced into Nigeria in 2010 via an agreement between the Nigerian Port Authority and TPMS, a private company. Barely a year later, the agreement was suspended. When our attention was drawn to the illegal suspension of the cargo tracking note system, we protested and the suspension was lifted on May 28, 2015, only to be suspended again in 2016. You see? All the, of course, this one is this is where they make their money, all the illicit money in shipping. In 2022, President Buhari issued an executive order which authorized a company to operate the cargo tracking note. But five companies sponsored by top government functionaries overruled the president and hijacked the contract. The company that won the contract has since sued the federal government at the federal high court. Meanwhile, Nigeria has lost at least $500 million while the security of the nation has been compromised by a bunch of corrupt public officers. Oh boy. And then number five, sale of public assets and enterprises. Successive regimes have been selling assets and enterprises owned by the federal government to members of the ruling class in the name of privatization. The buyers turn around to engage in asset stripping, according to the Bureau of Public Enterprises, between, 20, between 2004 and 2012 or so, the federal government okay, sold 142 public enterprises to the members of the ruling class. The 10% shares reserved for the staff of every privatized enterprise have been covered by the so-called core investors Contrary to the provision of the this, of this Section 5, Subsection 3 of the Privatization and Commercialization Act. Number six, $7 billion fixed in 14 banks. Oh boy. Sometimes in 2006, the CBN yanked off $7 billion from the nation's foreign reserves and fixed it in 14 commercial banks in Nigeria. The deposit and the accrued interest were not recovered from the banks, and when I reported the matter to one of the anti graft agencies, the CBN claimed that it had forgiven the forbearance. Can you imagine? Sale of Heritage Bank, Keystone Bank, Union Bank, and Polaris Bank by CBN. The CBN took over the Heritage Bank, Keystone Bank, Union Bank, and Polaris Bank, spent trillions of naira to revitalize them only to turn around to sell them under the table. For instance, CBN invested 1.3 trillion naira in Polaris Bank but sold it for 50 billion. Oh boy, theft of crude oil. The Nigerian Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative, <coughs> NITI, has um, revealed that Nigeria lost 619.7 million barrels of crude oil valued at 16.25 trillion naira which is equivalent to $46.16 billion to crude oil theft between 2009 and 2020. Immediate past 
National Security Advisor General Babagana uh, said that Nigeria might lose $23 billion in 2023 to a theft. Now, wow. Theft of gold and other solid minerals. The theft of the nation's mineral resources is not limited to crude oil as solid minerals are equally smuggled out of the country by highly placed criminal elements. Former Minister of State for Mines and Steel Development, Dr. Uche Oga, recently disclosed that private jets are being used by the rich for gold smuggling in Nigeria. He stated this at an investigative hearing on $9 billion annual loss to illegal mining and smuggling of gold organized by the Senate Committee to on Solid Minerals, Mines, Steel Development and Metallurgy. During his contribution at the hearing, Senator Oji Zokalu disclosed that Nigeria lost close to $54 billion from 2012 to 2018 due to illegal smuggling of gold. Can you imagine? Amcon is owed 5.4 trillion naira by the rich. What? Where are we in this country? Where are we in this country? Eh? Oh boy. So things are, and the government is aware of all of this, and nothing is happening. Eh? Nothing is happening. It's just a lot here to to mention. Okay. Another one is indiscriminate import duty waivers that has effort to track and monitor tankers conveying fuel sabotage by NFC. Can you imagine? Uh, 10 trillion naira diverted by CEOs of government enterprises. 6 trillion naira unpaid ground rents by buyers of government properties. Stolen crude oil valued at $29.17 billion. Okay, oil theft again of 16.25 trillion naira. Deduction of collection cost by FIRS and NCS, Nigerian Customs Service. Can you imagine? Okay, diversion of 6.0 billion dollars approved for turnaround maintenance of refineries. All those money diverted. Investment in Dangote refinery and rehabilitation of four refineries. We cannot give account of all of that. Okay. Special salaries for top public officers, security votes, and pensions for governors. That one is unaccounted for. Wow. Diversion of dividend and feed gas of $33 billion by NNPCL. Can you imagine? Diversion of trillions of Naira through fuel subsidy fund, which is causing problem in Nigeria today. Okay. Between 1999 and 2006, 813 billion Naira spent. Between 2007 and 2009, 794 billion naira spent. 2010 to 2014, 3.9 trillion naira spent. 2015 to 2023, 11 trillion naira spent. On fuel subsidy alone, it's going up and it's not coming down, and we don't even have the fuel. It's quite unfortunate. Okay, there's also the recent Nigerian air open looting by uh, this government that just concluded under Buhari. And we say we are, in, we, are, we are here. Buhari is the most corrupt Nigerian president ever. Tinubu, okay, must arrest that criminal immediately. Tinubu cannot arrest Buhari now. How? It's not possible. They are best of the same feather. They work together and they are compensating themselves. Somebody say, which Tinubu? Tinubu has no moral justification. They are partners in crime. The truth is that in good country, Tinubu has no moral event to contain. No talk of winning. Nigerian presidency, that is true. Somebody said, I just laugh. <laughs> so you don't know the meaning of five and six relationship. Eh? Tinubu is an extension of Buhari, and that is true. Okay, this is APC, this is Tinubu, uh, uh, what do they call it? Uh, Buhari Pro Max. That is what Tinubu is. Eh? So it's quite unfortunate that Nigeria is in this mess. And this is exactly what Femi Falano has rolled out here uh, to let us know exactly the trend of Nigerian corruption. Quite unfortunate.